The first five minutes on a flight are more important than you might think. In today's video, we'll be going through 15 things to do as soon as you get on the plane and the consequences of missing a step. The first thing to do when you get on the plane is to double check that you're in the right seat. Sometimes the seat configuration can be confusing. A isn't always going to be the window seat, and C isn't always going to be the aisle seat. Make sure that A, B, and C letters align with the window, middle, and aisle seat as expected. And by the right seat, I mean the seat that is on your ticket. Always stay in the assigned seat for takeoff, and then once in the air after the seatbelt sign has been turned off, you can consider grabbing an empty seat instead. Although you'll often find that there aren't any since planes tend to be jam-packed these days. There is one situation where you should move seats before takeoff, and we'll get into the details of that at number five. The second thing to do once you've found your seat is to stow your carry-on correctly. Use the overhead bin for larger bags or a rolling carry-on suitcase. Suitcases are usually best stored on their side vertically with the handle facing out so you can easily pull it down at the end of a flight. If you can't lift your suitcase overhead, consider asking a fellow passenger for assistance instead of a busy flight attendant. It's often in their employment contract not to lift heavy suitcases due to the risk of injury so it can put them in a bit of a tough position if you do ask. Keep in mind that the space above your seat is not specifically reserved for your suitcase. If the space is full by the time that you board, which is annoying but common, try to find another spot further up in the plane cabin so you will pass by it as you get off the plane. If you do store your suitcase in an overhead bin that's behind you, you will need to wait for the passenger seated behind you to get off the plane before you are able to go back and get it. Next, you'll want to ensure that your personal item, which could be a purse or a backpack, is stored correctly underneath the seat in front of you. You will have access to it during the flight, but all belongings need to be stowed for takeoff and landing for safety reasons. Once you are in the air, you can pull your bag out along with any larger electronics like your laptop. And while you can keep small items with you at your seat, it is a good idea to take a moment and secure your valuables. You likely just walked onto the plane with your passport in hand. Please do not stick it in the seat back pocket. This is a recipe for disaster as leaving your passport behind on a flight would be a big problem, especially since you typically aren't allowed back on the plane after you have gotten off. Be intentional about placing your passport as well as any other valuables in a secure zip up pocket close to your body or a discreet zipped up pocket in your personal item bag where it's not going to easily fall out or be left behind. And while I'm not trying to scare you, definitely stick around for number 10 for another tip about securing your valuables that you will absolutely not want to skip. And before getting too comfortable, take a moment to test the amenities and the features at your seat. Check your seat back and make sure that the entertainment system, the audio jack, and the USB charging slot are working as they should be. You may also want to check the power outlet that is usually located beneath your seat. And then also be sure that your seat fully reclines. If you do notice that something is not right, then let a flight attendant know immediately. As I mentioned earlier, many flights are full and there may not be a seat for you to switch to. But if there does happen to be an available seat, you will want to claim it before someone else does. The easiest way to do this without ticking off a flight attendant or accidentally stealing someone else's seat is to notify the flight attendant and then politely ask if there are any other seats available. And while there may be no economy seats left, there might be a business class seat that the flight attendant could put you in instead. Have a peek around and scope out where the emergency exits are located. Emergency exit locations can vary depending on the aircraft model and size, but you can usually find them located over the wings as well as at the very front of the plane and at the back. It's also a good idea to familiarize yourself with the safety card in the seat back pocket. Even if you've flown before, it's good to review the safety features of the specific aircraft that you happen to be on today. Although you might want to give the safety card a quick wipe down first. Along with the tray table, entertainment system screen, and the armrests. All of these are high touch areas that are sometimes neglected when there is a limited amount of time to clean between offloading one flight and onboarding new passengers. Sanitizing wipes are sometimes handed out to you on the flight but it's a great thing to pack and bring with you from home since these wipes don't count as a liquid and you are allowed to bring them through airport security. And before you get too comfortable, take a moment and check under your seat for a life vest. Sometimes passengers take these and there's a chance that you don't have one. 
If you can't find one, be sure to tell a flight attendant right away and also prepare yourself for a delayed takeoff since every plane seat is required to have a life vest by law in order to take off. A fun fact is that the seat cushions on most planes can usually detach and then be used as a flotation device. I don't know how well this would work and I would hope that you nor I ever have to find out. Once you have checked below your seat, it's time to have a look above it and check the air vent. Check if the air vent is opened or closed and then also see if it's aiming at you. This is a matter of personal preference and there is no right or wrong when it comes to using the air vent or not using it during a flight. It is good to know the current state of the air vent so that if you do find you are too hot, you don't just end up suffering without realizing that your air vent was closed and vice versa if you get too cold during the flight, you will know that you can close it. And this next one is an important one that I wish we didn't even have to think about as travelers. You will want to take a moment to look at the passengers that are seated beside you, in front of you, as well as behind you. This is not about being paranoid, but it's about being smart and not letting your guard down when you're surrounded by people you've never met before, many within arm's reach, in a dimly lit, tight space. The chance for theft is surprisingly high on a flight as it's a very unique and attractive scenario for a thief. Where else would you find dozens of tired travelers, many of whom might be under the influence of sleep aids, actively trying to ignore their surroundings with eye masks and headphones? It would be too easy for someone to slip something out of your underseat bag and you probably wouldn't even notice until they were long gone after the flight. You could potentially find yourself in a much worse situation as well. It only takes one person with bad intentions to cause trouble, and there's no guarantee that that person won't end up sitting right next to you or behind you during a flight. And on a less sinister note, it is always a good idea to give a quick hello to the passengers that are seated beside you. This can make a long flight more pleasant since whether you like it or not, you will need to cooperate with the passengers in your row. For example, if you happen to be in the aisle seat, a short mention that you are happy to get up anytime they need to get out and that they shouldn't hesitate to give you a shoulder tap is always appreciated. I am not one to talk to other people on a plane and I don't particularly like it when people talk to me. But this brief introduction can prevent any awkward situations later in the flight where in a case that you do fall asleep, there isn't a stranger trying to climb over you. And if you haven't already, it's your last chance to download any content for the flight. It's definitely better to do this before you leave home, but if you do have a data connection, you will have a few minutes left to download Netflix episodes, movies, podcasts, or music to your device. I know quite a few travelers that actually use these last moments of connection to check reviews for the TV series and the movies available on the Seatback Entertainment system. I love getting into a good series on a flight and most recently watched the second season of White Lotus on a flight to India. So good. Let us know down in the comments the last thing that you watched on a plane. And while you're down there, definitely hit the like button and subscribe. Checking the flight itinerary and being mindful of any time zone changes is a step that you should not skip for international travel or long haul flights. Adjusting your watch or phone to the destination time zone right after boarding helps you mentally prepare for the upcoming shift in time. This simple act serves as a physical reminder to your body clock that it will soon need to adapt to a new schedule. For instance, if you're departing in the evening according to your local time, but then will be landing in the evening of your destination's local time, you're essentially losing a night. In situations like this, trying to stay awake during the flight means you'll likely be tired enough to sleep upon arrival, allowing you to better sync with the local time zone at your destination if it is the evening when you arrive. I fly from Canada to Asia roughly one to three times every single year, and I do find that my best tip to beating jet lag is to get aligned with the time zone at my destination before I've even taken off. As the flight gets ready for takeoff, it's time to prepare by adjusting your seat back to the upright position, closing your tray table, opening the window shade if there is one, and fastening your seatbelt. These are standard protocols on all flights that are in place for your safety. To avoid any holdups, make sure your seatbelt is fastened over any blankets or jackets so it's visible to the flight attendants as they come by and check. Now is the time to take a deep breath and relax. Travel is exhausting and there is so much that went into getting you onto that plane seat from packing, preparing your home, getting to the airport, security checks, finding your gate, and so on. Now that you're seated and settled, there's not much else to do. It's a time to get excited about where you're heading or simply look forward to being back in the comfort of your own bed. 
Flights are one of the few times that you can truly disconnect and a time that I personally always look forward to. But I know that a long flight in economy is not the most exciting thing for everyone, especially when it's a full flight. Thankfully, there are a ton of easy things that you can do to make your next flight feel like first class. I'll pop a video up on the screen now, as well as link it in the description that covers all of my favorite tips and tricks to get comfortable on any flight. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to join us back here every single week for more travel tips and hacks. Until then, safe travels and I'll see you soon. Bye.